اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد وعجل فرجهم ولعن أعداءهم أجمعين صلى الله عليك يا سيدي ومولاي يا صاحب الزمان عجل الله تعالى فرجك الشريف Dear viewers, my sincere greetings to you for watching this program broadcast to you by Imam Hussein TV. Well, I hope you're all fine and in perfect health. Well, during this episode, we are going to discuss one of the most uh, significant ahadith that actually describes and defines the sublime status of an Imam, a divinely appointed Imam. So I would like to recite the hadith first to you and then inshallah elaborate on the hadith so that we can inshallah, God willing, achieve more knowledge from the words of Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam. So here goes the hadith. قالت فاطمة الزهراء سلام الله عليها عن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله. So uh, the holy and supreme lady of the world is relating this hadith from the apostle of Allah سبحانه وتعالى. مثل الإمام مثل الإمام مثل الكعبة. مثل الإمام مثل الكعبة إذ تؤتى ولا تأتي. So that is the hadith, and I hope that you will just bear it in mind as I will explain it to you. Uh, but allow me to break down the hadith into two parts so that we can uh, maybe f uh, better uh, discuss the the meaning than the teachings that we can read between its lines. Uh, basically, the first part of the hadith is uh, the divinely appointed Imam is akin to the Kaaba. Now, let us remember that uh, the hadith in the Arabic terms, uh, the letters Al-Imam have been used, which mean this hadith applies to all divinely appointed Imams, in particular all 12 Shia Imams and of course His Majesty Imam Mahdi uh, So bear that in mind, that's the most important part that you should keep in mind that connects this hadith with His Holiness, His Excellence, Imam Mahdi alayhi salam. So, now to better understand the hadith, I would like to relate a hadith which is, of course, in praise of Amir al Mu'min alayhi salam and describes one of his merits and virtues by through the words of uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. But again, remember that. Ahlul Bayt السلام, have said uh, نورٌ واحد, meaning that uh, um, we all share the same merits and virtues. Of course, uh, there are certain uh, characteristics and virtues that are unique to certain Imams like Amir al-Mu'min or Sayyid al-Shahada But uh, this hadith that I'm going to read to you uh, can be applied to Imam Mahdi as well because he is just the rightful successor of Amir al-Mu'min alayhi salam. Qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alih Mathalu aliyin fikum Aw fi hadhih al-ummah Kamathal al-ka'bat al-masturah An-nazaru ilayha ibadah Wal-hajju ilayha faridah Subhanallah, these are beautiful words in praise of our the, the supreme master and commander of the faithful Amir al Mu'min alayhi salam. So the Holy Prophet uh, is saying that uh, Ali alayhi salam in uh, this nation or among you is akin to 
the Kaaba, which is of course partly concealed, as you know, with those uh, pieces of black cloth. So uh, the significance of this first part. Uh, now, this simile between Amir al-Mu'minin and Kaaba and being partly concealed, as you can see, and you know, the Kaaba is partly concealed with those black clothes hanging from all four sides. Now it means that just like the Kaaba, some or maybe most of Amir al-Mu'mineen's virtues and merits have been kept in the dark from the people out of divine wisdom. So the same uh, actually truth applies to Imam Mahdi salam. The next part is Mere looking at the face of Amir al-Mu'min is an act of worship. So just uh, in the same way that looking at uh, Kaaba according to a hadith is an act of worship and is rewarded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala looking at the face of Amir al-Mu'min alayhi salam who has been likened to Kaaba in this hadith in this simile is an act of worship and uh, the next part in the same way that the uh, the journey and pilgrimage of Hajj is a, an obligation a mandatory obligation uh, that is ordained by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so uh, people must approach Amir al-Mu'min alayhi salam in the same manner and it is an obligation upon them so like uh, take it a religious ritual which has been mandated now uh, the second part uh, which I would like to actually discuss is the part that uh, it says if uh, tu'ta wala tu'ti if I'm not mistaken yes it's tu'ta wala ta'ti I'm sorry well uh, before that uh, I just uh, would like to remind you that uh, in the same way that to perform Salat, we have to face and stand in the direction of Kaaba so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept our prayer, which is of course Salat is a fundamental actually pillar of our faith. So in the same way, we must, according to this hadith, sincerely align ourselves and our entire life with the Imam of our time. So this is the beauty which we can derive from this hadith. Now the second part uh, which goes is tu'ta wala ta'ti. Now there are some interesting points to derive from this second part of the hadith. One of them is that the Imam is needless of uh, others basically and it is others, it is us, that need to approach the Imam and get close to him to be blessed or actually to receive uh, guidance and uh, to be blessed by him and of course to be assisted by him. So uh, it is the people that should approach and get close to Imam and it is us that who are in desperate need of the Imam to receive his assistance and blessings and everything. Also, uh, of course, the Imam uh, is not obliged to uh, approach us, but perhaps out of his mercy and out of his uh, benign character, he certainly blesses us and is constantly protecting us, praying for us, and is trying to keep us from evil all evil and tries to actually keep us on course on Surat al mustaqim the path that leads to the paradise so uh what are we doing in return and what is our duty let's not forget that the imam is the kaaba 
we should be uh, we should be actually aligned with the Imam so the Imam if Imam blesses us it is only actually out of his mercy and it is out of his benefaction so let's try to be more uh, benefactory toward our Imam let's try to be more let's say let's take one more step toward our Imam let's devote more time to our Imam well uh, thank you very much for watching this episode I hope that this hadith uh, <clears throat> I'm sorry I hope that the hadith was uh, as precious as it was was useful to you and you should uh, and all of us should implement these precious words in our everyday life thank you for watching stay tuned goodbye